so in our previous class we have completed with the vectors right now today we will be starting with another uh, data structure or object which is factors but before moving to factors first let us uh, just quickly uh, complete two functions which we left before first function that we'll be doing is the paste function so basically uh, what, uh, why do we use paste function it's a very common Give me one second. Let's create a new. Sh hmm. So why do we use this uh, paste function? Let us first understand this. It's a very common function that we use. For example, I am using. I am putting. I am using a. Let's say suppose variable or an object. I am creating an object actuators. Wherein I am putting two elements. Hello. World. Right, so this is a what? This is a character vector which I have created over here. It's a character vector which I have created, right? Now, if I want, can I add, if I want hello world, hello world together. So, will I be able to use some function on this? Will I be able to use some function on this? Yes or no? Using some function, can I use some function on this? No, it will not have any meaning because obviously it's a character vector. So on a character vector, you cannot use something which is uh, which is a numeric function. Clear? So that is why if I want hello world together, so what I what I do is I use paste function wherein you can write all the elements together, whatever you want to paste. Suppose I want to paste hello world. So I'll just hit run and see when you run this you get hello world together by default the space between the two words by default the separator between the two words is a space right so if you search for if you search for paste function in the help tab you will see that here these dots here these dots are one or more r objects which are actually a character vectors and then there is a separator the separator is basically a space so basically between two elements two or more words what separator do you want to give for example if instead of this i want to use a separator of colon so i will write sep and then i can straight away write within quotes you will have to give a colon right and when you run this you get a semicolon hello world between hello world world as a separator what are we getting semicolon is this clear is this clear you can also use you can also use you can also use different objects see one or more r objects so we can use different vectors as well for example within paste i am creating two uh, vectors a b then i am putting another vector b so these are two vectors see what do we get a c b d so basically what are they doing they are pasting first elements of all the vectors then second element of all the vectors together and so on you can have more than two ele elements as well clear what if what if i have this what if i have this instead of a b c d e so i'll just run this and then again what we did recycling recycling of the vector so basically your shorter vector will be recycled again and we'll have a a c b d and then with e we'll have again a so the shorter vector always gets recycled is this clear till here any doubt any problem any doubt fine 
what if here I had created an actuators vector so what if I just what if I just write paste and here I will write actuators will it work let's run this yes is it working is it working no you are getting two separate words hello world right so it will not work in this way <coughs> Clear? We can also use it in this manner. For example, paste the answer is, and then I'm writing, I'm using another vector over here. Yes. So basically, so basically what I'm doing, so basically this is a one single character and this is a vector with two elements. So when I run this, the answer is yes, the answer is no. So by default, the space, the space over here is the separator because the separator by default is set as space, right? Is this clear? Any doubt till here? You can also do something like this here and then 1 to 10. So here you will get your 1, your 2, your. So basically, this is just a single character right and this is a vector of 10 elements so this is also a vector with one element so this vector with one element will be recycled how many times 10 times 10 times clear any doubt any doubt similarly we have a paste 0 function so paste 0 is similar to that of paste function the only difference with paste 0 is that here the separator is by default set as null so when I say null what is this null suppose I write the same function here same thing just that I am writing paste 0 so basically by default the space is set as null nothing so you are not getting anything in between here in paste, in paste function, the separator is a space. In paste 0, the separator is nothing. No space. Nothing in between. Clear? Clear till here. Any doubt? If you are facing any doubt, please write it in the chat box. Now we have now we have a collapse function as well uh, in uh, in in within the paste function. This is the collapse argument. What is collapse argument? Let's see. What does a collapse argument does? Let me just use this function only. I'll just copy paste. I'll just copy paste. Now here I will write collapse equal to. Um, So basically what will happen here when I was running this code out, the output which I was getting was the answer is yes the answer is no this was the output this was the output now what if I want and these are two different elements right what if I want this as an entire one element and I want this as the answer is yes or the answer is no in that case and I want the entire thing as one single element here we are getting two different elements I want a one single element so I will just run this and see the answer is yes or the answer is no this is coming as a single element so what collapse argument does is that it joins two different outputs together and whatever the separator between the two outputs you want I am putting space or space so I am getting the answer is yes space space or space the answer is no is this clear any doubt 
Sanchi, we have done uh, paste zero and paste are exactly same. Just that in paste zero, the separator is null. Basically, there is no space, nothing in between. So, for example, if you are using if you are using a paste function, if you are using a paste function, and here suppose here suppose you are keeping the separator. Here suppose you are keeping the separator as just two colons, quotations and no space, nothing in between, you will get the same answer, see. So paste zero is same as paste when separator is nothing, just nothing, not even a blank space. Here, now you understand the collapse argument as well. So it's basically separating two different characters and getting it as a single character getting it as a single character. Here we can also, so basically you all can just write it down, collapse is for separating two or more characters and getting it as a character. Clear? You can also take up this particular function and here we can write, here we can write separator equal to as maybe, let's take a dash. So see what I'm getting, the answer is yes. So separator was for separating two different vectors or objects. So the answer is dash yes. The answer is dash no. These were the two elements and these are now collapsed together using or. Clear? Is this clear to everyone? If yes, just write a yes in the chat box. All right. Now we'll move. Now we'll move to another very very interesting function, which is if function. If function. So what if function does is that you can write any logical statement first, and then what? is the value that you want if this is true. So basically, basically, if anyone has done um, Excel over here, they will understand this properly or maybe it's exactly the same what you have done in Excel. So basically what an if function does is that first we give a logical statement. A logical statement is something like, like uh, is 4 greater than 5? So, our output of a logical statement is always in the form of true or false. Now, if this particular logical statement is true, then what is the value that you desire? If this logical statement is false, then you will get nothing. There will be no output. Clear? Clear? So, first you give the logical statement. Sanchi, you have to pin the screen. I have shared my screen, so you can just pin that shared screen. <clears throat> Alright, so we'll first, first give the logical statement. The output of the logical statement is always in the form of a true or a false. If the value of that logical statement is true, then you will get whatever value you have written in the second bracket. So this is the first bracket and this is the second bracket. Right, let me take one example. Let's suppose I'm taking a as 5 and here I'm writing if a is greater than 5 or maybe greater than 7. Let me If this is greater than 2 then I want a is greater than So here I have here I have, here I have allotted 5 
in object a so i have created an object a right now we write the if function here in the logical statement i am writing a is greater than 2 a is greater than 2 this is the outcome now the outcome i am writing within the quotes because it's a character outcome that you want it's a character object or it's a, or a character uh, type data set or a character data type uh, so i'll put it in within the quotes and when i run this because this statement is true because this statement is true i am getting this particular output now what if i just tweak this particular thing a little bit and here i assign another value to a as 1 see so i am running this particular code i am assigning a as 1 and now i'll again run the same function i am getting no output see why because obviously this statement is false if this statement is false then you will get nothing because this will this you will only get when the value is true here the value is not true so you're getting nothing you're getting what if you also want a statement or what if you also want a value when the statement the logical statement is false in such a case in such a case we'll modify our if function and we'll write else we'll write else value if so we are introducing a new function else and we can write value if false. so i'll just take this entire function again same function and here i'll write else a is less than clear so when i run this when i run this i'm getting a is less than sanji is the screen clear now is the screen clear now Now another shortcut that we'll be using a lot moving ahead is if else, if else function. So what if else function does is that here within a single bracket only, within a single bracket only, first you give the logical condition, then comma, give the value if true, and then you give the value if false. So this is a simpler form of representation. So I'll write if else a greater than 1 or greater than 2. Here I can straight away write a is greater than 2. a less than 2. So within a single bracket only, first I've given the logical condition. If this logical condition is true, then I will get this output. If the logical condition is false, I will get this output. Right? So let me just run this. A is less than. This the value which I had assigned A was 1. Clear? If else, if else function. Way easier than using if else. Uh, way easier than using if and else separate. <clears throat> now suppose i want to write two conditions together so this is the last part actually now suppose i want to write two or more conditions you can also write two or more conditions i'll keep it simple for today i'll give only two conditions two or more conditions so for example i want to see whether a number whether a number is between four and ten for example so here we have two conditions the first condition is the number should be greater than four the second condition is the number should be less than ten clear so i have two conditions so i can write 
let me assign a value to a first let me keep it as 6 all right now i will write if a greater than or less than 4 i can write within the bracket a is less than 4 here else now i also want to give another condition that whether a is less than 10 or not let me change this to greater than let me change this to greater than so a is greater than 4 now i want to check whether a is greater than 10 or it is less than 10 right so here i have written else now again you can write if and again you can write one more condition that a uh, less than 10 so here in this case i will write a is less than wait a second wait a second wait a second i think we'll have a problem over here i'll have to actually keep it as less than only because if a is less than 4 i will get the output as a is less than 4 if a is greater than 4 then this statement will not run and it will move to this portion of the entire code it will move to this portion of the entire code so here i will write that if a is less than 10 a is less than 10 else a again so i am saying that a is less than 10 or less than 4 if this statement is true you will get the output as a is less than 4 if this statement is not true then we will move to the next portion which is the else portion here again I have written a if statement. Here again I have written a if statement. And here I have written that if a is less than 10. So I will get less than 10 or a is greater than 10. Here you can also write one more thing that a is between 4 or 6. Now here there is a problem that we usually face when we write a long code. It gets it moves away right away of the screen so what we can do is we can move to the next line but there is a rule in our programming if you want to move to the next line is that here i can move to the next line after else but what if what if i am doing next line before this else function so this will be treated as one function and this will be treated as another function so it will not be treated as the same function so you always have to tell r that after else obviously r will be expecting something so that thing we'll mention in the next line so what r will do is that after else they will search for another bracket if they don't get the bracket within the same line they will move to the next line but if you are keeping else in the next line they will never search for this else because they don't know they will think that the function is ending over here right so this is again a rule as in when we move ahead we'll be learning about this we can actually next line this clear now let me just run this quickly so we are getting a is greater than 10 all right wait i have to select this entire thing a is between 4 and 6 4 and 10 a is between 4 and 10 clear any doubt Honey, I will share it. No, I will share it. 
but please do it with me so i'm giving you some time please complete this and then we'll start with factors and this is known as r script not r editor pdf this is known as r script so make sure you're using correct terminologies from day one <clears throat> all right so now we'll move to factors i'll just give you all one minute please complete this and then we'll move to factors
Harsh, that we'll do, uh, like just the part, our markdown, our notebook that is not there, all right, and our project that we'll do later on. Uh, it's not required in details as such. <clears throat> all right. So uh, now, once we have completed this, now let's start with factors. So one thing which you all should understand is that uh, is that in vectors we have stored any we can store any type of data right we can store a categorical or we can store sorry character we can store numeric complex logical any type of data set but the only constraint was that it will store one single type of data right that was one single constraint that we faced here now what if there are some specific kind of data sets for example when we say gender gender can only be let's say, suppose male and female right when I say uh, size of a particular dress it can be maybe med small medium large just to keep it simple or we are talking about a particular uh, occupation and we are saying that there can be only three or two occupations white color blue color so what these different types of data sets which I am referring to is known as these are known as character or uh, these are known as categorical data sets what is categorical data categorical data are data which can only take a few limited type of values so suppose I am saying again gender male female or if I am saying uh, different classes class 1, class 2, class 3 and so on till class 10 for example. So these are the data types which can only take certain specific values. These are known as categorical data which can has which will have limited number of what categories right. So here these Factors which I will be discussing are similar to that of vectors. The only difference between the two is that in case of factors, it is explicitly told, you have to explicitly tell it to your R programming that we are storing a vector but in the form of a factor and it can only take few limited categories. If you are including some other category within that, it will not accept the value. Clear? clear so let us first try to create one um, fact over here <clears throat> we are starting with factors and I want all of you all to please do it with me just type down all the functions now for example I have taken a vector gender right and I am taking let's suppose 10 students These are the students or this is a data which is given to me which contains the gender. Let me also take others. Okay. So how many of them? One, five, six. Right? So we have 10 students whose gender is recorded in the form of F and M. So I have created a vector. This is what? This is a category. This is a character. This is a character vector. Clear? Now how to convert this character vector into a factor? So I will create a new. I will create a new. This is, this is just an object that I am creating. New object. And the name of the function that we use over here is factor. The name of the function that we use over here is factor. So the factor function is used to encode a vector or to convert a vector in the form of a factor. What is factor? The factor is different categories. Factor is a word for, is alternative word for category. Clear? Now we use the factor function. We use the factor function. Here I will just write the name of the vector that we are Converting that we want to convert into a into a factor. Now see what will happen when I run this. Now we have a gender fact. This is an object and it's a factor 
let us first understand this gender fact let me run this gender fact and show you all how it looks like so basically see how it looks like first we have all the elements which are there in the vector then we have the levels now what are these levels these levels are different categories what are the categories f m these are the three categories female male others that's it there is no other category that this particular factor can take now again if any one of you is very smart to understand one more difference if i run this gender if i run this gender any one of you just can let me know what else what other difference can you see between the two um objects correct correct so correct so basically in the gender uh, object the values are stored as a character data type so it's represented in quotes whereas here it does not matter what data type you are using it's just that all of these are values and these are the levels that we have so even if it's a character data type it will not be represented with the quote your because if you think logically your categorical data will generally be always in the form of a character there are some cases where we have it in the form of numeric for example 1 0 for example uh, what are the different classes in a particular railway in a particular train class 1 class 2 general class for example so similarly or th first tier two tier three tier right so you it will depend on the situation generally it does not matter as to it's a character or it's a numeric it the only thing that matters over here is that it it should have different categories and these should be limited categories is that clear so what are levels clear what is levels right now let me now let me also show you all the structure str of gender fact if you see the gender fact structure how it looks like so here we have it's a factor with three levels w that slash means with right with three levels what are the three levels f m o and how is it represented see 1 2 what this 1 2 this 1 stands for f this 2 stands this 2 stands for m this 3 stands for o so if you all see just see please here see my cursor see my cursor this f is denoted as 1 this m is denoted as 2 2 so wherever we have m you will see a 2 wherever we have o you will see a 3 wherever you have f you will see a 1 here here so basically it says that this particular element belongs to category 1 which is female this is category 2 this is category now by default by default f is coming as 1 m is coming as 2 why is this happening because there is no relation to as what i have stored over here no it's all because of alphabetical order so f is coming first m is coming second o is coming after m that is why it is always in the alphabetical order but what if what if i want it other way around i want m to be 1 i want f to be 2 and o to be 3 in such a case can we change this yes we can change yes we can change so we'll change the order of levels i want to change the order of levels i'll create gender fact 1 a new factor <clears throat> factor gender and here i can write levels equal to now in whatever order you you want your levels to look like you will have to give that particular order over here so i want m to be first then f and then o so here i am just giving another argument 
called levels if you all can see here levels this is actually reordering the earlier ones so if i run this and now if you check the structure of gender fac 1 now if you check the gender fac 1 we have a factor with three levels m f o m is now denoted as 1 so see wherever we have m here we have m it's 1 now it's changed this one is now represented for m you can reorder your levels clear any doubt till here any doubt clear now the next thing is now the next thing we can perform some basic very basic functions we can perform some very basic functions on this for example is dot vector let me check if it's a vector gender pack one false because it's what it's a factor right it's a factor it's a factor true you can also check the class of gender fact you will get a factor obviously you can also check the length as we did for a vector you can also check the length what will be the length 10 values so we are getting 10 you can also check the number of categories in a particular factor for example n levels for example you have 10 categories you can have 10 categories in a particular data type right so i will write n levels gender fact 1 this will give us 3 because there are levels and if I want to know what are these 3 levels I will use the function levels these are factor specific functions clear clear and if you want to see the difference levels gender fact what is the difference between gender fact 1 and gender fact here m is coming as first and here f because we had reordered this particular factor clear just do it till here if you all have any doubts let me know there is a reason that I am not sharing the file earlier before the class. I have these files ready with me. Because I know if I share it with you earlier, you will not write the codes. So I want all of you all to please write the codes with me. If you all having any uh, time problem or speed problem, just let me know. Right? I will slow down or I will increase my speed, whatever it is. Any doubt? Alright. Now let's move to the next factor example. Here, for example, I'm taking Alright. So once this is done, once this is done, here in this particular uh, factor. We have M, F, O, right? Now if I want to label all these values and I want instead of F, I want female. Instead of M, I want male. Instead of O, I want others. So will I sit down and do it for all the 10 values? No. There is a shortcut for that. We have an argument called labels. So here I'll just simply copy paste this entire thing. labeling the value now here i am creating gender fact 2 levels are defined 
the next thing which i defined is define as labels now one thing which you all have to keep in mind just see to this very very carefully here in the levels i'm writing f m f o so m is 1 f is 2 so in the labels also you'll have to first mention number 1 which is male if you write female over here then wherever you see your m it will be replaced by female so you have to be very very careful while labeling that because if you once it is done there is no turning back your data is gone your actual data is gone so it's always two three things which you have to keep in mind always try to create new objects because in that way you can always go back to your original data my original data was this gender this gender vector this gender vector was my original data using this i created another factor gender fact then i changed the levels gender fact one so always it's a very very good programming practice that you keep on creating new objects unless and until you are 100% sure of whatever you are doing right so here male female others why why i am writing in this order because it should be same as that of levels it should be same as that of levels and when i run this and you get the output for gender fact to we have all the values instead of m f you are having the proper labeled values and whenever you are moving to the next line make sure after comma you are moving to the next line if you are moving to the next line before comma r will just stop its function over here so always move after comma you can compare this with gender fact one here we saw f m and this has been replaced by female and male and others there is another way also of doing this there is another way of doing this just we have used a argument we have used an argument called labels instead of using an argument labels we can also use a function level this is a function and within the levels function i will write gender fact 1 and i will then give it the names whichever whatever i want just give me one second i'll take your query yes true that doesn't matter no 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 there is no reason there is no it's just that it is odd actually it's just placed in that way no reason it might it might look different in different laptops no reason all right see so here we have levels now what i am doing is gender fact 1 gender fact 1 is not labeled right we have m f all these things here now what i am doing is i am using levels function within that i am putting the factor name factor object which is gender fact 1 and i am taking all the three names and when i run this and when i now run gender fact 1 see it all are labeled so there are two ways of labeling there are two ways of labeling this is the second method there are two ways of labeling the first method is to use labels argument within the factor function the another method is using levels function separately clear clear any doubt clear now we'll create a new um okay complete
now let us create another so basically first let me uh, explain this concept to you all so there are two different types of categorical variable right i'll just call on the so there are two different types of categorical data one is known as nominal what is nominal something which you cannot rank for example male female you cannot rank male as first or female as first right so you cannot rank them or you cannot say that male is greater than female or female is less than or uh, greater than male something like that and another type of category similarly similarly when we talk about occupation so in occupation as well you cannot rank different occupations right can you do that no you cannot rank the occupations but there is something called as ordinal data ordinal factor something like medium small medium large can you rank them yes small comes at the bottom then we have medium then we have large or you are keeping small at the top same thing like that or you can have maybe um scores a b c e e is fail c is something which you used to get d something like that right bad excellent a so you can rank the grades you can rank different sizes so these are known as ordinal factors ordinal categorical data so there are two types of data sets nominal categorical and ordinal categorical so here when we were talking about gender this was nominal or ordinal nominal this was nominal now we'll talk about ordinal character so let me create an another vector over here well the another vector which i am creating let me take it as size s m s m l One, five, six, seven. So seven sizes. Eight. So S is small, M is medium, L is large. So here I have a vector. I have a vector with eight characters. Now I'll convert this into a factor quickly. Size back. We'll write factor. size and the moment we do this and we run it get con it gets converted into a factor but it's a simple factor that we have created before also but now what what is the change that i want to you know tell my r is that here this factor is a ordinal categorical data so basically i will also tell r that take it as a ordinal factor for that we will write something called as ordered so here we'll create another factor size fact 1 factor size and we'll write ordered ordered equal to true when i am writing ordered equal to true this means i am telling my r that this is ordinal data means a data which can be ranked a data which can be ranked so now when i run this when i run this size fact 1 see what is the difference between this size and this size this factor is a simple factor which we created before gender male female or others why are we getting l at the first because l alphabetical if we see the alphabetical order l comes first here if we see again the same thing just that the only difference is we see less than signs why because by default r considers that the first level is the smallest then the next then the next so is this correct no this ordering is not correct by default it has ordered it alphabetical order in the alphabetical order it has taken l as the one first or the smallest m as the next one and s is the highest which is wrong 
the ordering is wrong but can you understand the difference between ordered true and by default ordered is set as false meaning by default you are taking nominal factors always whenever you specify ordered equal to true it will be taken as a ordinal data type right now another thing which you have to change over here is that you have to tell your r that the ordering of this particular entire thing is wrong change the order so you will introduce another argument called levels where you will give the correct ordering here now we'll give the correct ordering where i will mention first one will be s then m and then n now let me run this size fac 2 size fac now you will see the difference between 1 and 2 s m m copy it down we'll just we are just left with very very when one small topic of indexation and then we'll finish with today's class just a very 5 minutes small topic clear any doubt so factor can be of ordinal and nominal whatever we have done so far was nominal now we are using ordered or ordered factor wherein you can order the different levels so we are taking small at the first medium large right and how you have reordered it in this particular manner using the levels function last what we'll be doing for today is indexation or indexing as we have done for our uh, uh vectors earlier it's exactly the same it's exactly the same so we have created we have created that gender factor remember gender fact 2 now here if i want to find out here if i want to find out the second element so i will just simply write this first bracket or the box bracket that we use is always used for indexation so when i write 2 see what i am getting i am getting male and also with that i am getting different levels because it's a factor data type it's a factor object so you will always get these levels along with the fa factor you can also get more than one elements together comma 6 so male and female you can also use minus sign so i instead of just second element instead of just second element we'll be getting all the elements so basically instead of this male we'll be getting all other elements so instead of male in between there was a male in between there was a male in between instead of this male we are getting all the different nine values now can i do this see can i do this can i do this data then so basically i'm asking r whether this gender fact second element male is this greater than the fifth element female this we can do with vectors right whenever we have numeric vectors we can do this so it says this greater than sign is not a meaningful sign for factors why because this was a nominal factor you cannot rank anything whereas if i use the same thing if i use the same thing with the size this was my size factor if i use the same thing with the size factor i will get the answer so it will it is asking whether this medium is greater than large you will get a false get a similarly we can also write whether it's equal to or not and let me it
multiplier so you can perform different mathematical or logical operators basically you can use different logical operators on a ordered factor greater than less than less than equal to greater than equal to equal to equal to is always double equal to right not equal to this minus 2 this minus 2 is removing the second element and you're getting so second element was c here the second element is male and we have in total 10 values minus 2 will remove male and you will get all the other values you can also do minus c 2 comma 6 so second and sixth element will be gone and get other values so is this clear what we have done it's a very simple thing actually first we take a vector we convert that into a factor if you want to change the levels you will have to use the levels argument if you want to label it you can use the label argument as we have done over here we labeled our values and if you want to create an ordered factor you will write ordered equal to true and then you can also do indexation and perform different logical operations Clear? Clear? Any doubt? Any doubt? So I'll be sharing these PPT with you all. Make sure you complete these tasks which you see over here. So once we have completed factors, I have given a task. And after the vectors also there was a task. So I will share these PPT with you all in the group. Make sure you complete the task. It's very simple and I will share the uh, R script as well. Any doubt? Just go through all the codes again. And then you will be more confident. Right? Anything? Any doubt? For equal to. This is for equal to. This means whether the second element is equal to the eighth element or not. Second element is male, uh, medium. Eighth element is medium, so it's true. If you are writing, for example, instead of seven, eight, you are writing seven, you are getting false. If you are just writing equal to, you will get an error. For equal to, it always has to be double equal to sign. Anything else? Let's do it till here and in my next class, which is tomorrow, we will be starting with matrix. We are just left with maybe 